Hey everyone, welcome back to the Trueline YouTube channel. I'm Chelsea, and this is episode 12, 12 of the Trueline Knits Yarn Podcast, and the first episode of 2023. It's a brand new year. Thank goodness for that. I It's been a busy holiday season for me, I in terms of knitting, and then working at the yarn shop. Today's my first day off in like five days, so I'm so happy to be here at home and able to film a new episode. I think... I know a last episode I promised a vlog and a um, everything I knit in 2022 video. The vlog is just not gonna happen. I December got so crazy and then it's not relevant content anymore because it's all Christmas themed. So I just couldn't make it happen. And I thought that if I told you guys it would happen, that it would not the case. So sorry about that <laughs> but there will be an everything I knit in 2022 video soon because I'm coming up on my one year knitting anniversary I don't know the actual date of my first knits and pearls but it was the end of January I think 15th or the 17th or something like that so I guess more mid-January so I figured that'd be my next video after this podcast so it can kind of be like a one year anniversary slash because it'll be everything I knit in my whole knitting career <laughs> since it started a year ago and so that one I'm like 90% sure will actually be coming. For today's episode I'm wearing my favorite outfit lately. This is my Petite Knit Festival sweater underneath my favorite item of clothing in my closet. It's a vest from the Tiny Big Sister. You can barely see it embroidered in the blue there. But it's a Spanish brand I think and the brand is called Tiny Cottons and it's like kids clothes but they have a women's line called Tiny Big Sister and I love them so much. I feel like it's me because I'm the middle sister. I have an older sister and a younger sister so I'm kind of like the tiny big sister and so I feel like it's the perfect brand for me but I love their aesthetic. It's such a nice brand so if you feel like you have similar tastes to me you might like it. So I like to wear this like chocolatey brown Sherpa vest over my festival sweater which is Explore Knits. Uh, the main color is extra sprinkles in the Rockies DK base and then the accent stripes are um, waffle cone in the DK base. So this is an outfit I wear to work all the time. Back when I was a fashion blogger I used to wear like different outfits all the time but now that I don't do that anymore and also just I feel like the pandemic changed a lot of people's styles. I know it changed mine. So after that I'm just like I have my favorite outfits, my go-to's, what I feel comfy in and this is one of them. So that's what I'm wearing today. And I have a lot of finished objects because last, I was trying to finish up all of my whips in 2022 last year. I didn't make it happen, but I got all of my little projects done, which was such, I mean, it was like three little weights off my shoulders. So I'm going to share those. And then I do have some whips, really fun ones and acquisitions. So and then my plans, I think I'll wait to share in my 2023, everything I did in 2022 slash plans 2023 video. So if you want to know what I'm going to be knitting next, which so many exciting things, um, hopefully check out that video maybe next week. All right, with that, let's jump into my finished objects. So first off, let's get this guy out of the way. The Sophie scarf that would never end. It ended. I knit this with the Yarn B, must be Merino, DK base. This is the color Sage, I'm 90% sure. And this was just a project for no reason. Wanted something mindless, except like I keep saying, this isn't really mindless because there's so much counting involved. So I'm going to take that back. Wanted something small. <laughs> so this finally got done. I think this was the first... Uh, whip that I finished. Like after I said I was going to finish them, I cranked this one out. And I really do love this yarn. It's an ac acrylic merino blend, I think, but it drapes so nicely and it's very soft and I love the color. So I'm very glad to have this guy all done. I don't think there's much more to say about it, but I haven't, I haven't worn it yet. So <laughs> I think my like Sophie scarf obsession might be like low-key over but I do want to start making them a little skinnier like I want to make them as if I'm gonna wear them as a headband I don't know that I will <laughs> but a girl could dream check and check 
I, I hope you guys are so proud of me because I really did like work hard on finishing all of these. <sighs> My Olivia and Oliver Fibers Pixie Dust Socks. I think the last time you saw these without a hair dangling from them, one was done and one was halfway-ish, but they're all set, they're all blocked, and uh, I've already worn them, I think, once. I don't know what's been happening with my socks lately. Maybe I've just been getting lazy, but I have been having the oddest gap. Okay, well, ignore this hole because I just didn't sew it up, but this, like, on the, um, decreases, I've just been, like, having an issue with my tension and I I think I'm just being lazy it happened on the toe as well you see that so I really need to like pay more attention <laughs> because I really want my socks to look as they once did which like maybe I was just trying harder when I was first starting out socks but this one looks good so let's focus on this guy beautiful okay so I love this colorway so sweet so the main color is called pixie dust and the accent color is called desert rose and this was the sock set from olivia and oliver fibers i'm sure they will come back in stock maybe in the spring but this is the color she usually has available and i got just her regular sock base i think it's 80 20 but it could be a 75 25 it is 75 25 more on that later but these are wrapped up and I'm so glad to have another pair of socks in my wardrobe, even if they did take May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, eight months to complete. Let's say seven, because I finished them last month. So that was my next 2022 whip that I wrapped up. My next finish object are my ruffle socks, <laughs> which I really tried to stretch them out when they were blocking, but it just didn't happen. So I'm gonna do a take two of these I didn't think they were going to get done in 2022 because I ran out of yarn. I thought that maybe because like my, um, my regular socks that I do in Olivia and Oliver Fibers takes like 58 to 60 grams of yarn and it has a significantly longer cuff than these short ones. But, and so I was like, maybe I can get away with a pair of ankle socks with a 50 gram ball. And I made it like this far <laughs> on the second sock. So it was like a week to go until the new year. I was literally thinking about just having these socks be a throwaway. Like I was just gonna do a totally different color for the last <laughs> like third of the sock. And then I was like, no, I want them to be, you know, I probably will wear them if they're done nicely. So I ordered the second ball of the old pink and then it came on December 31st <laughs> and I finished. The rest of the socks so literally like down to the wire on the last day of 2022 i finished my ruffle socks but overall this experiment was a failure because this cuff is simply not long enough to cover my ankle so it it cuts off at a really weird point on my ankle so i did the five rounds of the ruffle which i might try like honestly maybe eight i just i need to play with this a little bit but so I did five rounds for the ruffle and then I did about 20 stitches for the cuff and I think it honestly needs to be, well, maybe I'll try 30 for my next pair and then 40 if it doesn't work out, but since I kind of freestyled these, like I wasn't really expecting them to turn out how I wanted. And if you're familiar with the Summerlee socks, her ruffle shorty socks pattern, um, I think there might be a method to why it works so well. <laughs> This pair, I'm like, I need it longer, and I think I want ribbing. And her pair is literally longer with ribbing, so I'm like, maybe maybe just get that pattern and support some really knits and get a nicer pair of socks. But, so I think that's what I'm gonna try on the next one. But they're done. And so this one was the Drops Nord, yes, uh, which is an alpaca blend, so you can see these are a bit fuzzier. Maybe you can see around there. And this is the color Old Pink, and there you go. <laughs> Some socks that I knit. Wow, I made socks. That's so cool. <sighs> okay, so then <sighs> let's talk about my bulky Manhattan hat. So, just saying it, 
if you can tell. Um, look at this. Yikes. So what happened with this guy was I bought uh, two skeins of the main yarn for this project. I was pretty sure I could get away with one, but I got two just in case. And I got so, I got like, I think three rounds away from finishing, finishing the crown and I ran out of yarn. I did not want to go into the second skein for like six yards of yarn. So I was like, let me just do a Kitchener stitch instead of doing the final decreases and whatever else the pattern said to do. Let me just do a Kitchener stitch and do these together. Um, I clearly messed up. <laughs> the knits go into the pearls and the pearls go into the knits. So this is not lined up at all. So I did the single folded brim and I can definitely, there we go. I have a little wiggle room with how much space is at the crown. So even though it's done, what I'm gonna do is pick up, I'm gonna backtrack on the crown and then give myself like two to three more rounds like rip out the crown and then two to three more rounds and then just start the crown early and I should have enough yarn to to finish doing all the decreases properly and still have enough room to do have my fold up cuff and have like as much height on the crown as I want I mean if I'm being honest this is the height of the crown that I want I like a little foof on the end of my hat but it just doesn't look good. Uh, so I'm going to do it anyway because as I'm thinking this through, I'm going to block this. So maybe I just aggressively stretch it when I block it and we still end up good to go. The other thing I want to redo is I tried doing the inside out um, decreases for the crown and it was too confusing to me. So I think I'm just going to go back to doing the knit side decreases and it'll turn out better and not have this just so it's too bad i finished it at the end of the year but what i thought was going to work just isn't going to work so i didn't block it or anything and i have it on my list to just kind of redo at some point because i do really want to have this hat i'm calling it my oscar the grouch hat because i love how it turned out but it's not called that it's the tory knits manhattan hat bulky edition and i knit this with a uh, Blue Sky Fibers Tweed Aran Yarn in the color Fern Frond, and then Kid Silk Haze by Rowan is the lace weight in the color Jelly. You can confirm in the uh, description <laughs> the names of those, but I did finish it. It just needs a little TLC. I think that's all for finished objects, so let me update you on the whips, which are around. I'm just gonna put them all in my lap. So what's in this bag? Okay, the scattering petals mittens. This was my advent project. I am stuck. I made it this far and they're gonna be so cute. I'm obsessed, I love these so much. These are being knit with my Olivia and Oliver Fibers advent yarn calendar, which is such a fun idea. I love, love, love. All the colors are so pretty and this is a pattern by Dana Ray makes on Ravelry. I cannot figure out the thumb increases in this pattern with the stitch pattern and I have essentially given up. <laughs> I really want these mittens but I just cannot, I can't figure it out. It doesn't, the pattern isn't patterning the way that it should. So I did you know, make it to one, two, three, four, five, six days in. But I don't know what's going to, maybe I'll take it into work and have my boss look at the pattern because she could probably help me. I don't know, but they're gonna be so cute when they're done. Like if I really can't figure it out, I will just knit tubes that close at the end and have thumbless mitts, I don't know. I could turn them into socks. It's always an option. 
I could turn them into socks. And then that would use up more of the yarn. I want mittens, we'll see. I'll check back in with you guys about that because <laughs> they're kind of stressing me out. Oh, there was one last finished object. Let's backtrack. You might notice I have a slightly different background than I usually do. That is because on January 1st, I rearranged all the furniture in my room. I know, I'm a January 1st cliche, but I needed some new energy and so I did that. And so now you can't see my bed. <laughs> I'm, I'm testing out this filming setup. I don't know if it works. I don't know if it's too distracting, but I have run out of yarn storage in front of me in my little shelf. So I started adding it to my bookshelf. So I thought it was a little bit cute, I don't know. But anyway, so I finished, <laughs> I'm still here, my waffle pillow cover. And I feel like since you can't see my bed anymore, I had to bring them both over here to prove to you that they're both done. So goodbye for a second while I hold these up. Oh my God, they're so heavy. So I finished crocheting this. It took a lot of Hallmark Christmas movies to get through all of the waffle stitches, but it's so cute. I actually don't know which one is the new one and which one is the old one. I think this is the new one, so. It's 22 by 22. <laughs> and the pillow form is 24 by 24. So it's the perfect size to fully fill it out. I did put in the little zipper. Here it is, it's an invisible zipper and low-key struggled with it i think i actually sewed the zipper um shut here ish so it doesn't open all the way guess how much i care oh it's vanna's choice from line brand in the color barley it's just an acrylic worsted tweedy brown yarn and yeah so that was my big endeavor i forgot about them because they were just sitting there on my brown floor i almost didn't see them my next whip Oh yes, is these uh, socks that I was working on at work. I haven't worked on them as much anymore because I have new projects that I'm working on at work. But these are the uh, boot socks I'm making in Rowan's Salted Tweed Yarn that I love so much. And this is the color Stone on top. And then the main color is Forest or something like that. I am almost to the toe. I have about half an inch, a third of an inch, something like that. And I wasn't intending on carrying the ribbing down the foot, but I forgot once I was doing the gusset and then I was just committed. So I'm not sure when I'm gonna wrap these up, but I would love to wear them sometime this winter. So maybe that should be a January goal. And they're DK weight socks, so they're working up fast-ish. And then, so I'm going to do the toe in the contrast color also. And I think these will be really cute. I'm really curious to try them on and see just how far up my leg this goes. But yeah, I'm just loving this yarn. I really want to buy more of it. I'll talk about that in my plans video. But this is farther along than it was before. But I still haven't started on the second sock. So that's fine. It's a chill whip, so I'm not too worried about it. And then in here, I think we'll just touch really quickly. This is the camisole. I did do a few rounds on it during a Hallmark Christmas movie, so it's maybe a little thicker than it was last time. But I did come to the uh, decision that I'm gonna do the skinny straps on this one. The fry, uh, and let me just talk about what actual pattern it is. This is going to be Friday Knits Sweetheart Ribbed Top and I'm using Fiber Spate's Vivacious 4-ply sock yarn in the color Gecko, holding two strands together. And I have a Sweetheart rib top already that is like one of my favorite things I've ever knit. That one has thick straps and it come, the pattern comes with two different options. And so this one I think I'm just gonna do like that. I think it's an I-cord maybe, like more of a spaghetti strap type camisole. And so I think that'll be a fun like differentiation and it will probably be done closer to like spring summer which is why it's such a fun exciting color but yeah so there's a few more rounds on that one the other thing i started working on is my it's a little more done than it was last time 
<laughs> refined knitwear rubus blouse that's what it's called and i have finished the puff sleeve increases which is so exciting so you can see those are the sleeve stitches right there and you can see it's gonna be puffy compared to like the body over here well yeah this is like extra thick this is regular um this is gonna be so cute <laughs> i did like i've done maybe 10 more rows on it so it's still not you know looking like anything but i did work on it so i wish you guys could feel this fabric through the computer or phone or whatever you're watching this on through my camera because it's so soft this is knitting for olive a uh, soft silk mohair held double in the color dusty olive wonderful if you haven't worked with knitting for olives soft silk mohair before and you're a mohair fan I highly recommend it is so nice I don't have any predictions on that guy but that's where we are so now I get to start on some new whips which I'm so excited about I just posted about one on Instagram the other day otherwise well and the other one I've posted about before I think too oh yeah I did but they're completely new to my YouTube channel so that's exciting the first one how should I do this I'll do this one first because I cast it on first is uh, oh no this one was in my last YouTube video just barely this is uh, the my favorite things knitwear sweater number 14 v-neck this feels very large for me that will be pretty oversized won't it um anyway so this is uh, where I'm at I think I just had like the back but hold on have a lot of stitches falling off <laughs> that this is the nice thing about this yarn combination is that that yarn is very this yarn is very sturdy i'm knitting this with brooklyn tweed uh shelter in the color wood smoke held together with another rowan kid silk haze color there we go so you can see the wood smoke is really grayed out brown and the branch color of the kid silk haze is a lot warmer almost purpley brown and together they make magic I'm really loving this fabric it's really nice it's so soft and like I said the shelter is very like it really holds its you know like my stitches fall off they just stay there they don't move they, it kind of like grips on itself really nicely so I've joined in the round to work on the body and maybe have like 10 centimeters done I think I have, I don't remember how many more I have until the ribbing. I think the ribbing is quite long, so I don't think I have too far. But I haven't been reaching for this one as much because look at that. I dropped a mohair strand right there. Oh well. I really need to do the v neck so I can figure out how this is going to hang on me in order to figure out the final length that I need to knit to and the sleeve length I need to do. So I'm just kind of like not doing that right now just because i want i'm at the easy part where i'm just knitting stockinette round and round and round so switching the gears in my brain is kind of like slowing me down a little but quite literally before i go on i need to pick up the next stitches and do that so that's something i need to do but i'm just loving working on this at least i was until i got distracted by my shiny new new whip I'm, I'm gonna go back to this one after that one's done because it is almost done. <laughs> now we're gonna move on to the most exciting thing in my life right now, which is in my new uh, project bag that I got for Christmas. I was so excited to get this. I sent the link to my family and was like, this is the only thing I want for Christmas. It's probably gonna sell out right away. <laughs> and, uh, but I did not expect it because A, these are really expensive and B, the whole website is in danish see you have to pay for shipping i don't know about you guys but i'm like very anti-paying for shipping i hate paying for shipping my whole family kind of has that too so i just really wasn't expecting it but several members of my family went in together to get it for me so this is obviously the petite knit project bag in this really cute navy and brown check pattern and they are still available on the website which is great 
it's wonderful. I love it. It feels so good. It stands up by itself. There's so many pockets. It's great. All right. So this project in here is a little sneak peek into my 2023 plans because it is my very first lace knitting project. This is called the Date Night Sweater by Kadri or Kaidri, C-A-I-D-R-E-E. -E. Don't really know how to say it, but um, I don't know why I feel so emotional right now. I just feel like crying. I'm welling up a little bit because I'm so excited about this sweater. And I can't believe I made it. Like, it's always the thing about holding it up to the camera is like, I did that. So it's this really, really pretty lace pattern with little bobbles in the middle that I keep having to poke out. But <laughs> hopefully after I block it and it's all ready to wear and everything, that'll calm down. But it almost has like a little leaf on either side with rosette motif. Like that's kind of what it reminds me of. And I just love it. The only thing I'm a little like nervous about is this neckband. I tried it on and it was kind of like awkwardly floppy. I think this might be the first project I actually add elastic into just to see if it kind of helps it figure out how it wants to hang. But I cast this on December 23rd and it's January 6th. So this has been about two weeks and I think I'm going to finish it this weekend. So fastest knit of my life. I am using an incredible yarn. You guys are going to be surprised because when I knit my anchor tee, I used a cotton merino blend and I hated it. But this is totally different yarn construction. So the brand is Concept by Katia and it's called Cotton Merino. But look at it. That doesn't look like cotton merino and it doesn't feel like cotton merino. It feels like Honestly, it feels like Surrey alpaca and it's 70% cotton. So the core is cotton. You can kind of see it's like a white and pink color. So the core is cotton. The outside is extra fine virgin merino wool and it's just a fluff master. Like it's just so soft and I'm using the color 137, which I think is like rose something or coral something or coral rose. I don't know. But it was kind of funny. I saw this pattern. I found it while I was at work. I was browsing Ravelry and seeing what was new. And I saw it and the sample is a bright red color. It looks very Christmassy. But, and so I, I found it in December and I was like, oh my gosh, I love that. And it looks like such a perfect first lace project because the lace is only down the front and the rest is all stock in it. So it's like, I get a really nice break to just do stockinette around the whole body and then this really fascinating lace repeat. So let me just say I loved doing the lace. Loved it. It was so engaging. I don't think I can say anything about it just because I, you know, you got, <coughs> excuse me, you got to buy the pattern, but it was just so engaging. I've, I looked forward to every single row, even the bobble rows. It's knitting up so pretty and I think it was the perfect combination for with the pattern and the yarn. If you guys watch Crochet with Kay, Kahila made a um, chunky Dahlia sweater in a pinkish and coral sand, sand scarn. <laughs> I, all the words are messing and jumbling in my brain right now. So she used Coast by Santa Scarn. If we're just gonna pretend I said that flawlessly that was like a rosy pink color. And then she used mohair that was more of a corally peachy color. And together, I just, I couldn't stop thinking about a fluffy pink lace sweater. It was stuck in my head. And so I think after I saw this pattern, I was kind of walking around the yarn store, seeing what we had that might work. And my eyes were like landed on this yarn because I was looking at the air and weight. We have maybe like, we don't have too much air and weight yarn in the store, but we have some. And when I saw this one, I was just like, um, Yes, because it feels like almost the exact color that Kahila sweater is made out of. And like I said, I just couldn't get it out of my head. So I had to do my own version and I haven't measured the sleeve, but I think I'm getting close to, well, maybe not close, but halfway there um, because it's kind of a bracelet length and then you do ribbing. So 
it's going so well. I'm so excited to have this sweater. Well, I did, I almost made a modification. I first cast on doing a folded collar just when I was looking at the um, projects on Ravelry. There's not too many, but um, I just didn't love the way the neckline was on those. It was just like a regular long tail cast on, I think, which a regular long tail cast on kind of makes, there's like a, a very defined line around it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if I, I don't typically use long tail cast on, so I can't, I don't even have anything to show you, but hopefully you know what I mean. But like, you can just see there's like kind of a, not a strict line, but there's a line. It was bothering me. So I first tried on, tried doing a folded neckband and with this, amount of fluff it was just too thick like it would have stood out from the sweater in a bad way like it almost looks stuffed <laughs> that's how thick it was and so I decided instead to do a tubular cast on just so it would have a little bit of a finished rounded look around it and I'm happy with how that turned out so and all of the all the bind offs are tubular so I was like let me just make it match and I'm very happy with how it turned out I'm gonna try and finish it this weekend. I wanna wear it so badly. I'm so excited. <laughs> I mean, how pretty. And I'm, the main thing is I'm so excited to block it and see the lace kind of settle out and put this elastic in and just, ugh, give me this. Give me this sweater. I'm so excited. I'm making the second size. I bought eight balls of the yarn and I'm on my sixth. So I have two more full balls after this. So we should be in good shape. Next is acquisitions. I do have a few um, and some extra special ones too, which is really exciting. So let me just do the first one. I wanted to share the full size skein that came in my Olivia and Oliver Fibers advent calendar because I think she's going to be doing a collection of all or the top colors that were in the advent um, calendar. And so I think this will probably be one of them, but it's called Marrakesh. And so it's inspired by the city of Marrakesh. Here's the inspiration photo and how the yarn turned out. It's really pretty soft pink with some dark blue and teal blue speckles. I am such a diehard speckle fan, so I love Olivia and Oliver because she really sets my speckly heart aglow. And so I just think this is so pretty. I'm definitely gonna make socks out of it and I just wanted to share because I thought it was such a special colorway. And if you like it, definitely check out her website because I think she'll be doing maybe a pre-order or maybe just an in-stock update of all of the advent colors that she's selected. So that's a fun one. And then I, I might have talked about it before, but I did the uh, La Mercerie Winter Wishes sock swap this year. So that was really fun. Basically you buy you don't buy a ticket, but you like pay a $5 entry fee and then you get paired with another knitter to send a little gift package to, which is such a thoughtful thing to do around the holidays. And the only requirement is that you send at least enough yarn to make a pair of socks out of and then any other little goodies that you feel like. So I got paired with Allie from Explore Knits and conveniently she, you know, dyes yarn. So she sent me some really fun Explore Knits goodies, one of which is this her Denali sock base in Petrachor or Petrachor, which I'm not sure how to say it, but I remember learning about this word because some people would like send me Instagram posts all the time, you know, that's like this, it's just like a word definition. And the, the meaning of this word is the smell of the earth after it rains. And I, I love rain so much. It's my favorite weather. I'm always so happy when it rains. So people kind of have learned to identify me with that weather. And so I had already heard of this word before she sent me the yarn, but it is this gorgeous warm neutral that's got kind of a hand painted, a little bit speckly, and there's just like some nice cottony colors, some gray, some beige, warm brown. I don't know. It's just really pretty and it's exactly what I would have picked out from her collection. So basically hit the nail on the head with that one and then I also wanted to share she included a hello lavender stitch marker I think that's from like her winter solstice collection I think that's in focus okay 
So you can see the, the sky is very glossy and then the mountains underneath are very matte. And Reshma, who is behind Hello Lavender that hand makes all these, hand painted the moon. How close can I get? Oh my gosh. It's like, I want this blown up and framed on my wall. It's so pretty. And I'm supposed to put this in yarn, like, ah, so nice. Um, which this was also over the stitch marker that came with the, um, 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 Olivia and Oliver Fibers advent calendar. This really cute one from Terra Clay. It's a little handmade stitch marker. So I just wanted to share these as well. If you guys are looking for cute stitch markers, definitely check these companies out. Uh, I have a couple more acquisitions. So one is um, just this game that I picked up from the shop. It's Madeline Tosh hand dyed yarn. And this is Tosh DK, which is 100% uh, Superwash Merino. And I just had to have this color because it's called Librarian's Dream. I've worked in libraries my whole life. I have thought about going to library school often. Might still do it someday. And so we had one skein left of this and I just had to get it. It's kind of this like mossy golden green color. And it's got like some dark speckles and some off-white shades. And it kind of reminds me a little bit of the Council of Elrond from my Lord of the Rings collection. I guess that one's a little yellower, but kind of a similar um, vibe. So I don't know what I'm gonna make with it yet. I'll just hang on to it for a while because I just like the look of it in skein form also. That was a fun little acquisition. And then I got a sweater quantity from work and it is the Fiber Company Lore in this color, which is called Serene. It's a really nice off-white. There we go. And it's, it looks a little grayer close up, but it's, it's a warmer shade. It's kind of a brown gray off-white. And it's a DK weight, but it has the exact same gauge as, uh, or it, the gauge is the same as the one used in Emily Curtis's dad sweater, which is what I'm going to make. So this is going to be just like a plain stockinette sweater. Um, that's a new construction to me. I couldn't tell you what kind of, it's like, I want to say it's like faux set in sleeves or something like that. So I think you still just like pick up stitches, but, um, yeah, it's a really cozy looking pattern. And I think this will be a nice yarn too make it in. It is 100% Kent lamb's wool from England. It's a very rustic feeling yarn. It's not soft, but I just think it's going to feel great and I'm excited. I'm always excited to block rustic yarns and just see how they like bloom after they get soaked in delightful wool wash and settle out a little bit. But this is commonly people's favorite yarn when they come into our store. The previous owner of the yarn shop, I think it's like one of her favorite yarns of all time. Um, and it's definitely one of my current boss's faves. So I'm excited to finally knit with it. My boss was so sweet. She gave us each a gift card to the store for Christmas. So this is what I spent it on. And then my last thing, oh my gosh. It's the final colorway of Long Dog Yarns, Lord of the Rings Yarn Club for 2022. It was a mystery club that I was signed up for since February of last year when I discovered it. And uh, December was the final colorway, and it's called the Grey Havens. And every time Brandy posted on her Instagram the inspiration photos for the upcoming month, just like single tear. I don't know why I've been so obsessed with Lord of the Rings lately. <laughs> so the scene inspiration was when Frodo leaves for the Undying Lands and says goodbye to all the hobbits and everything. And it's this amazing really soft warm yellow with lots of speckles all the like hobbits outfits and it's a very like golden sunlit hazy scene and she just captured it perfectly as usual and i'm extra emo about lord of the rings right now because she's um well she's doing the pre-order for all of the colors um at the end of this month so you can get whatever you want on any base you want as much as you want she's 
launching uh, semi-solids to go with each of the um, variegated colorways and they're all inspired by members of the fellowship so every day I log on to Instagram I see her new inspiration photo and I'm like I've graduated from a single tier to like two three five six tiers keep an eye out for that pre-order highly recommend it's gonna be amazing so many of the colors are just I'm trying to plan out like what I'm actually gonna get and I think I'm gonna get a sweater quantity of the September colorway which is the deep breath before the plunge which is this really nice gr uh, green speckled gray and mauve and white color I just think this would be an amazing sweater and I would think about Gondor while I wear it so and then obviously I'm gonna order a skein of the January color that I missed last year shortcut to mushrooms so I can have a complete set I think that wraps everything up I hope you enjoyed watching I hope you were able to make some progress on whatever you're crafting on please consider subscribing to my channel if you'd like to see more videos from me in the future and give this one a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching and I will see you in the next one hopefully next week or in the next two weeks with everything I knit last year and then moving right on to some normal podcast episodes after that so happy 2023 and I'll see you next time bye